Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup present Inner Sanctum Mysteries. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. This is your host at the squeaking door again. Just, um... Slither in and let me dispel your weariness with a bit of eeriness, hmm? <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. No, please. Don't sit in that chair. I'm uh, saving it for rigor mortis to set in. <laughs> oh, dear. I see this is going to be one of those nights when my favorite character gets killed. Yes, Mary. But don't scream blue murder because this is a corpse of a different color. Well, if it's going to be that kind of a story, I'd better tell folks about something cheerful first. Yes, I mean Lipton tea. Lipton's is such a friendly, welcome drink. And that's because of its brisk flavor. Now, that word brisk is important. It means that Lipton tea always tastes fresh and and full-bodied, tangy and vigorous. It's never flat or wishy-washy. That's the reason why Lipton seems to make good food taste better and why Lipton tea is the perfect beverage to serve on your entertaining friends. So even if you're not a regular tea drinker, you should try Lipton's. That brisk flavor makes all the difference in the world. And now let's leave the world, uh, temporarily, of course. Tonight's story is called The Lonely Sleep. It's an original radio play by Christopher Mayo, who scribbled it during a nightmare. And our star is Carl Swenson, who plays the role of Archie Gold. Murder is a specter which nudges all of us, anywhere. Most of us will never murder, but can any of us say we never will? Certainly Archie Gold, 30-ish, bald and mild-mannered, never thought he would murder. Archie was the window display man for Greg's department store. At night, the store is a fantastic nightmare of eerie shadows, covered showcases, cavernous depths, and dank, stale odors, with only his own hollow footsteps for sound, because windows are dressed at night. It's night now, and Archie's busy in his storeroom, crating his favorite mannequin for shipment to the mannequin factory. Being a lonely man, he talks to the mannequin. And being in love with Esther Newman of the store's accounting office, he naturally calls his favorite mannequin, Esther. You've been very mean to me, Esther. The last time I asked you to go out with me, you snickered at me. That's not nice. That's why I had to do this to you. Archie tucked Esther's smooth pink torso into a crate. There. Perfect fit, darling. Perfect. Then Archie wrapped Esther's slim legs and arms in excelsior, tucked them into another crate. So you wouldn't put your arms around me, darling. Well, you won't get another chance. Then Archie picked up Esther's pretty head and placed it on his workbench. Oh, Esther. I'm so lonely. Why don't people talk to me? Why can't I be popular? But what's wrong with me? Why don't you go out with me? What Archie never dreamed was that the real Esther Newman was at that moment slamming the last of her monthly report books closed, flicking off the light, and starting out of the finance office toward the rear door of the store. Oh, Esther, I want to tell you. She stopped by Archie's half-open door when she hears his voice. But, uh, no, listen to me, Esther, darling. I am making enough money here to buy us a little place over in Jersey. See, all my life, I wanted to love someone like you. You're so beautiful. You will marry me, won't you, darling? Why, Archie, yeah. go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sitting there proposing to a dummy. And the dummy's name is Esther. What a coincidence. <laughs> uh, uh, Esther, you, uh, you worked late. I, I didn't know. Uh, no. Uh, I mean, yes, yes, I, I give the mannequins names. It's sort of a game. A yeah, game. That, that's it. Well, they don't talk back anyhow. <laughs> no, they don't talk back. But they're sort of kind. They smile at me. And see, I'm I'm lonely. Mm-hmm. I work all night. And Esther, will, will you go out with me Sunday night? Mm-hmm. Please. Just just dinner and, and the movies. Are could... you kidding? Why don't you ask your dummy friend? 
Hey, say what a swell idea. She won't eat much. You can maybe get her into the movies for half price. And <laughs> when you kiss her goodnight, Archie, she won't slap your face. <laughs> Why are you looking at me that way? You shouldn't laugh. You, you're crazy. You're trying to scare me. <laughs> yes, that, that's it. No, you're not. You are crazy. Don't come near her. Archie! You shouldn't laugh. Archie! Don't! Oh, you shouldn't laugh. My turn to laugh. See? My. My turn. <laughs> <laughs> You shouldn't laugh. People shouldn't laugh when you're lonely. You see, the specter of murder had nudged Archie, and he's obeyed. This was no mannequin at his feet. This was a woman, warm, beautiful, and dead. Then, being scared and lonelier than ever, Archie talked to his mannequins again. This time to Frank. Painted and rouged and handsome in Greg's bargain 2950 tweed suit. You heard her laughing at me, Frank. I, I, I just couldn't stand her laughing at me again. If you look at her, Frank, you'd think she was asleep. Her neck's broken. See, what am I going to do with her? I, I got to think. Got to hide her. Got to dress the front window, too. The window... Sale of cozy kitten mattresses starts tomorrow. It's a big sale. Sleep on a cozy kitten. I've got it, Frank. The window. I've put her in the window on a cozy kitten mattress. And nobody will know. And then tomorrow night. I... So Archie used some pancake makeup, bringing life to Esther's sallowing cheeks and purple lips. He placed her dead weight on a hard truck. He rolled her to the lighted window. An hour later, Esther's corpse, covered with gleaming white sheets and sleazy satin quilts, smiled in peaceful bliss at the empty street. Archie found his work well done. Nothing more to do now. Just wait. I'll go home. And wait. It's a good window. You look very pretty in bed, Esther. I've been watching you, young fella. Yeah. Saw you do the whole thing. I... What's the matter? I scare you? <laughs> no, no, officer. I, I mean, I, I, I didn't know. Yeah, I've been in the doorway across the street watching you. A lot of work to make up one of them windows, ain't there? Yeah. You saw me do the whole window, you mean? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh. So I put the mattresses in, make the bed, put the signs in, and then fix the lights. Then you put the girl in the bed and fix her face up. Yeah, it's a nice job. Yeah. <laughs> Say, hmm. you look bad, son. Yeah. Anything wrong? You sick? Huh? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm just tired. All through for the night? Yeah, I'm all through. Uh, good night, officer. Good night, young fella, and don't worry about your girlfriend. I'll keep an eye on her every night. <laughs> so Archie went home, as you or I might have done. And because he'd been too busy setting his little post-mortem stage, the impact of his crime began to seep through only as he neared his rooming house. Maybe the girl in the doorway he passed started him thinking because... She laughed. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> Just a girl and her date. But you can't blame Archie for hurrying. You would have thought it was Esther, too. Archie hurried. He hurried to the rooming house. He raced up the steps. He had to get to his room. Get in and close the door to the world. Close the door. That's it. I can't laugh at me here. They won't find me here. This is my room. I... Oh, no. Nerves. Stupid running like that. I've got to act normal. 
Sure, just just like nothing happened. I, I couldn't help it. She made me do it. No, forget about it. Why, Archie, I... go. No. No. No, you, you can't laugh now. You're, you're... I'm dead, Archie. Yes, in a way. I'm in Greg's department store. Window. I don't believe in ghosts. It's... It's just my mind, my... my imagination. That's right, Archie. You're too clever to believe in ghosts. I'm not a ghost, Archie. I'm in your mind. I'm part of you now. Part of you. Get out! Get out! I'll drag you out! Oh, no, Archie. You can't. Unless... Unless? Unless, Archie. Unless you replace me with someone else. Yes. Yes. That might do it. Someone else. Another girl. See? That's how a murderer thinks. Oh, yes, yes. You do the same thing. Archie never thought he would murder. Now he's ready to do it again. Get rid of his conscience to get rid of a voice. Archie lit a cigarette. He poured himself some milk. Ignoring the laughter in his brain as he pushed the again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crooked and hard and clutchy. Oh. Like they were on my throat. No, oh, shut up! <laughs> Archie threw himself on the bed and jammed the pillow against his ears. And fell into a dream worse than reality. Oh. Uh. Uh, 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 hello. Uh, Archie Gold? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is Archie Gold. Uh, this is Mr. Greg Archie. I know this is your time to sleep, but it's important that you get down here right away. Uh, is anything wrong, Mr. Greg? I can't tell you over the phone. Come down here. Goodbye. All right, Mr. Greg. <laughs> After he'd shaved and dressed, Archie felt a little better. After all, if they'd discovered anything, Mr. Gregg wouldn't have called. He'd have sent the police. Feeling of confidence stayed with him until he stood across the street from Gregg's. He lost it then. It dropped with a sickening pain about his heart and a dry pinching about his lips. People were standing three deep in front of his window display. And he caught sight of a policeman's cap following Mr. Gregg's bald head into the store. Well, were you thinking of going window shopping tomorrow? Hmm? <laughs> Want to be popular? Have lots of people crowding about you on the uh, sidewalk side of a plate glass window. Want to be a mannequin? <laughs> Look up Archie Gold. He's the mannequin doer. <laughs> well, all I can say is I'm glad that murderer is about to be caught. Why, Mary, don't talk that way. It was really kind of Archie to put her on the mattress. She was so sleepy. In fact, she was dead to the world. <laughs> yes, the one to feel sorry for is Archie. Why, the poor fellow's shivering. Why don't you make him a cup of uh, Lipton a tea? Hmm? <laughs> Lipton's is too good for him. And besides, he's probably too scared to taste the difference between Lipton's and ordinary teas. Yes, folks, Lipton tea is different. In the language of tea experts, Lipton's has a brisk flavor. And when they use that, use that word brisk, B-R-I-S-K, they mean that Lipton tea tastes tangy and spirited, really full-bodied. It's never flat or weak. So get acquainted with that brisk flavor. Well, you just don't know how good tea can be till you know how good Lipton's is. Well, let's see how good Archie's alibi is. Remember Archie, the lonely little man who dresses Greg's department store windows at night? He just couldn't stand being spurned by Esther Newman any longer. She laughed at him when he asked for a date, and now... 
Esther is a lifeless mannequin advertising the restful qualities of cozy kitten mattresses in the window display. And Archie enters the store to see what's in store for him. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Gregg, I'm... Uh... Archie Gold, come in, come in. Close the door. Sit down. My uh, boy, you know Miss Newman and our bookkeeping department? Yes, sir. I knew her, but I'd, I'd, I'd like a chance. Now you're so going well. to get a chance, my boy. Before leaving on a week's vacation, Miss Newman completed our annual report. Miss Newman is on vacation? Yes, yes, yes. Which isn't important. A report shows we sold 16 cozy kitten mattresses in one year. Well, that's not many, is it, sir? It's terrible. We were stuck with 1,500 of them. Just a minute now. Jenkins. Jenkins. Yes, Mr. Gregg? How many mattresses have you sold now? 802, sir. You hear that, Gold? Yes, sir. 802 mattresses in a couple of hours. And your window display did that. My boy, you're a genius. Uh, Mr. Gregg, I... I've no, got no, no, to... no, 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 no. I know just what you're going to say. Any man who has the imagination to put a woman dummy asleep in a window. And such a dummy. So, so peaceful. How much are we paying you, Archie? It's 36 47 a week, sir. Starting today, it's seventy two ninety four. And a private office. And you're the head window display manager of my three stores. Ha! Stunned you, huh? Everything I've always wanted. What's more? I've had pictures taken of that window with the crowds. And the paper promised to run it in tonight's edition. With your name. Good? Yes, sir. I, I want you to know, sir, I, I appreciate it. Oh, all that. nonsense. Greg knows a bargain. Now go home to bed again or take tonight off. Oh, no, no. I, uh, I, I have work to do. Ah, get more good ideas. Good, good. Uh, m- Mr. Greg. Yes, my boy. If, uh, if the mattresses are selling so well, we won't need the display. I, I can take it out tonight. Oh, nonsense. Don't touch it. We'll run this sale for two weeks. I just ordered 1,500 more mattresses. <laughs> Success and popularity was sweet to Archie's taste. But Archie knew a corpse, no matter how beautiful, cannot survive the sun beating through glass for long. And Archie knew that. It was a wretched rainy night. Greg's department store had long since closed its doors. The night belonged again to Archie. Now he had a nasty job to do. He drew the curtains across the big window. In case the officer was watching again... Esther was just a mannequin now, a mannequin of flesh and bones, but a mannequin. And Archie spoke to his mannequins. You've had a hard day, Esther, darling, haven't you? Well, it's all over now. You never did anything for me alive. Dead, you brought me success. Now I've got to send you away. You're stiff and cold, Esther. And you can't laugh now, can you? Esther couldn't laugh. And Archie opened the crates which contained the mannequin he had originally planned to ship. With a few simple tools and lots of work, he made Esther, the real Esther, conform to his original shipment. A torso. A pair of heads. Yeah. Who? who? Oh, that's, that's the alley door. Somebody's there. Cop, maybe. I've, I've got, got, got to act natural. After all, she's well hidden. Uh, Could I come in? Please, I'm so wet and tired. A girl. It's a girl. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, come in. Uh, get out of that rain. Thanks. Why, you poor kid, you're soaked. Come into the workshop. I've got a heater in there. Oh, gosh, thanks. She was sent to me. Someone to take Esther's place. Feel better now? Yeah, lots better. You're very kind. How did you happen to pick this door to knock at? Well, the alley seemed a good place to get out of the wind. It started to rain and I saw your light. Oh, I see. And you're broke. Yeah. It's the usual story. I came to town from Philly to get a job. Job was there, all right, but the boss wasn't on the level. Well, don't you have a home? A parents or a husband, I mean? Uh-uh. Oh, that's no. a shame. Um, look, uh, stay stay right there now. I, I'll, I'll be right uh, back. You're, you're not uh, leaving me, are you? No, no, I'm going to get a blanket to, to put across your shoulders. I'll be right back. 
Of course he'd be right back. Wasn't this just what he needed? Another mannequin to satisfy Esther's voice? It made sense. The second time, it's easier. It always is. Don't move, May. Huh? I'll put it across your shoulders. All right. You're a very lonely man, aren't you, Mr. Gold? Yeah. How do you know that? Because I like you. How does that prove I'm lonely? I like lonely people. Why? Because I'm terribly lonely myself. I I got some coffee in the thermos here. I'll I'll get you some. I like it here. I like to look at the mannequins, especially that handsome one there. What do you call him? What do you mean, call him? Well, you must talk to them. I would. You're wonderful. You understand. Yeah, I, I do. I do talk to him. His name's Frank. Uh, Frank, meet May. May, this is Frank. Hello, Frank. I'm sleepy, Frank. Oh, May. Why did you come tonight? Why couldn't you have come two nights ago? Uh, are you, you're sleepy? Mm-hmm. I'm warm and sleepy. Uh, look, I have three hours before my window has to be finished, and I have an errand that'll take me about an hour. You you climb into the bed in the window and... and... <laughs> People will see me in the window. No, no, the, the curtains are drawn. I'll... I'll wake you when I get back. All right. Looks like the kind of bed I could sleep on forever. Forever. <laughs> Doesn't always work out the way you plan it, see? Archie didn't want to murder Esther, but he did. Archie wants to murder May, but he'd rather not. Well, Archie drew the satin quilts over May. She smiled, closed her eyes with a murmured thanks, and was asleep. Archie knew now he loved her, that he must never listen to her speak again. While Archie carried the crates containing Esther's remains into the station wagon in the alley, a little man with a sad, droopy face and a derby hat argued with the night captain of the local police station. I tell you, I know what I'm talking about. I, I stopped at Greg's window four times today. I, I know a corpse when I see one. Well, I saw that window, too. That's a dummy in that bed. I know a dummy when I see one. I don't doubt that, Captain. You've had more experience with dummies than I have, but I've had more experience with corpses than you have. That's, that's a dead girl in the bed. Now, what makes you so sure? I've been an undertaker for 40 years. My name is Huzak. My establishment is down the block from Greg's store on 10th Street. Mm, okay, we'll check. Uh, operator, get me Mr. Greg. Yeah, Greg's department store. Of course it is home. What else at this hour? Archie had a plan. Excitement gripped him. But that habit of years was strong, and he talked to Esther as he piled her... Three coffins into the station wagon in the alley. Don't you worry, Esther. In a half hour, you'll be at the bottom of the river. You shouldn't have laughed, Esther. And then I'll come back to me. Sure, Archie had a plan, all right. But it didn't include the little old undertaker who knew a corpse when he saw one, or an angry, sleepy Mr. Gregg. Or a confused We were right then coming to a stop in front of the store. This is an outrage, a preposterous, fantastic farce. Getting me down here in the middle of the night. Prove I have a corpse in my window. I know, Mr. Gregg. I feel silly about it myself, but Mr. Huzak here seems so sure. The curtains are drawn in front of the window. We'll have to go inside. Oh. In a minute, you're all going to look very silly. There. Does that look like a corpse? No. You're right. It's not a corpse. It isn't a dummy either. She's alive. Breathing. There's something queer here. I'm going to look around outside. Archie! Archie, go! Archie! Archie! Archie didn't hear himself being paged. 
But at the entrance of the alley, he saw the police car in front and he heard the police captain shouting from the sidewalk. That was when Archie decided it was better to be lonely. The lonelier, the better. They found out. That's the police. They said they found out. Hey! Hey, you! Ah! now. Got to. They won't catch me. They won't. Got the lights, Fred. I gotta go through. Faster. Faster. Why can't it go faster? The, the truck! Turn right! Turn! No one ever heard Archie's last words. They bubbled through his torn throat as he lay in the glass-smashed window through which he'd crashed. No one. I'm... I'm... so lonely. Nay. So lonely. Well, Greg, here's your Archie Gold. But those crates will be interesting. Uh, Awful. Awful. Yeah, quite a mess. No one was cruel enough to point out a gruesome bit of grisly humor. The lonely little man who'd spent so much time in display windows had created his final masterpiece. Archie had decorated his last window in Husack's funeral parlor. The lesson we learned from tonight's story is that murder doesn't pay. It's a losing business. Murderers are always in the uh, red. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's strenuous work, too. You, you're bound to find yourself a little stiff. <laughs> Mr. Host, I did not like that story. Well, neither did I, Mary. Imagine the cozy kitten mattress company pulling a smart advertising stunt like that on Lipton's time and for free. Now, that's not what I mean at all. And if you're worried about Lipton's, let me assure you that Lipton's is the largest selling brand of tea in the whole world. That's the kind of popularity that really counts. And folks, if you'll just once try Lipton tea, I think you'll be convinced, too. Well, I have to run along now, folks. Got some shopping to do in Greg's department store. What? Oh, I know it's late, but, um, you see, Archie and I shop at night to uh, avoid the shrouds, you know. (laughs) By the way, this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery Novel is Puzzle for Wantons by Patrick Quentin. Oh, and here's a special announcement. Next week's Inner Sanctum story, directed by Hyman Brown and brought to you by Lipton Tea and Lipton Soup. Next week's story is about a man whose dreams always come true. All he has to do is to dream that somebody's being murdered and... (laughs) Enough to keep you awake, isn't it? (laughs) Uh, Until we meet again next Tuesday, you you dream of me and I'll dream of you. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Now it's time to close the squeaking door, so... Good night. Pleasant dreams. Mm Folks, here's a grand way to begin a meal. Serve Lipton's noodle soup. Lipton's takes no time to prepare, and yet it has a real fresh-cooked chickeny flavor. Yes, it tastes just like the chicken noodle soup you'd make right in your own kitchen. And Lipton's is economical, too. It costs less and makes lots more than canned soups. So, folks, don't forget to serve Lipton's noodle soup. And don't forget to tune in next Tuesday night for another Inner Sanctum Mystery. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.